Hello, and welcome to AFSPA Live, our monthly digital broadcast designed to give AFSPA members and eligible federal employees a place to ask questions and get answers about past AFSPA talks topics, their benefits, and wellness needs. There are three primary ways you can join our broadcast. Join us live by clicking the link in this video description and following the instructions to allow access to your camera and microphone. Then a show moderator will be available to assist you further. You can ask your question through the chat box on whichever social media platform you're streaming AFSPA Live, YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn. If you're not able to join us live, call our toll-free line prior to the broadcast at 888 888- 435-0757 and leave our team a voice message that we may play back and answer live on air. Just tell us who you are and the question you'd like us to answer. I'll see you at the next APSPA Live. Hi everyone, welcome to APSPA Live our live video broadcast Q&A session that we stream every last Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. Eastern. My name is Maddie Norton, and I work for ASPA as a junior communications coordinator, and I am here today with our COO, Kyle Longton, and a special guest from Aetna. I'll let her introduce herself, but we are going to be talking about the FSBP and Aetna Medicare Advantage plan today and all the questions that you guys have sent to us, um, and it'll be a very full episode, I think. So, um, Kyle, if you want to take it away and introduce Britt to us. Sure. Um, Maddie, thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. I am am coming to you live from um, Sarasota, Florida, where I am happily meeting with the Foreign Service Retiree Association of Florida uh, later today and tomorrow. Um, But I, I don't think you all showed up to hear too much from me. Um, I think you showed up to hear from our guest, um, Britt Pirates, who is a senior manager for uh, federal accounts at Aetna. Um, and Britt, you've been working on the Foreign Service Benefit Plan for, we'll just say over a decade. Is that yes. fair? <laughs> About 15 years. It, okay. And in a number of positions, including as a, a as an advocate for our members when there were tricky claims that came through. So you're, you are, are familiar with both the, the customer service side, the claims side, the contracts, all of it, including our topic for today, which is the um, uh, FSBP Aetna Medicare Advantage plan, right? Yes. Great. So, um, Britt, thank you for for, for joining us. And um, thank you, everybody. We have a, um, a lot of interest in today's topic. And so I don't want to waste too much time um, with, with introductions any further. Um, uh, Britt will have an opportunity to demonstrate her expertise as we go through the the um, session today. So Maddie, um, do you want to kick us off? Yes. So it seems the hot topic that we've been getting um, from all the questions over the past week have been about prescriptions specifically. Um, Kyle, can do you want to do a little overview of how prescriptions work with the Aetna FSBP Medicare Advantage plan? Yeah. Well, I'll give a, um, a little bit on sort of how things have worked under the high option plan. And, and as most of you know, um, our prescription benefit manager for many years has been Express Scripts. Um, and so they distribute the the um, prescriptions. If you have home delivery, they manage the pharmacy network and they work with us to, to provide a number of support programs, including a dedicated expat team for our members overseas. Um, We did a number of sessions about the Medicare Advantage plan during open season to make clear that one of the changes that our members would experience was that with the Medicare Advantage, Express Scripts would no longer be the pharmacy benefit manager, but it would be CVS Caremark. Um, And that is absolutely the case for our more than 500 members who've opted into the Medicare Advantage plan. And they're seeing some really, honestly, good benefits, some that are better than the high option, including co-pays on certain preferred generics at preferred pharmacies as low as nothing. Um, and so, but we had some some complicated questions that came up. And one of the ones I want to address actually came to me yesterday. And um, Britt, I will spare the puns that I shared with my team yesterday about glazing over topics and not being cruller to the members um, and just jump right to the donut hole question. Um, you know, that there, there is this, There's there's been a lot of um, talk about for years about donut holes in prescription coverage under Part D. So can you first of all start off and, and just sort of explain how the prescription 
coverage works under the Medicare Advantage plan? Is it a Part D plan? It is a Part D plan. It's separate um, separate from your traditional cause. Is you don't have the Medicare A and B and then the Part D. It's all inclusive under the Medicare Advantage plan. Um, so you have those prescription copays. Um, like you said, sometimes there's little as nothing for the um, preferred generic um, or as little as $2. So really good benefits for those generic drugs. Um, a lot of people see stuff on TV about, um, you know, the prescription drug and there being a donut hole where there is a gap in coverage. So basically what it means is you use a certain amount of your benefits and then you there's a gap in coverage where you're paying the cost of those prescriptions. What's different FSBP Medicare Advantage plan is you don't have a hole. This feds plan is very different from the ones that you see on TV. So you don't have any gap in coverage with your prescription drugs. Fantastic. And that goes to sort of the heart of why we started working, you know, worked with Aetna to offer the Medicare Advantage plan is that you know, this is not the, the same as a commercial Medicare Advantage plan or others that you may see. And um, it, it has more robust coverage, including coverage that is at least as good as, and as we're talking about here with copays, better than in some cases, the um, the high option plan. And that was one of the requirements that, that we had and that OPM had um, to approve the plan. So um, Britt, I think that was as, as clear and brief a, a description of the donut hole issue as we could have. Um, so we'll, I, we've got a number of other questions. So Maddie, what what's next? Yeah, so um, it looks like we have just lots of general questions. So I think it'd be a great idea. Someone has asked, um, what are the advantages of the FSBP Aetna over the normal Medicare Part A and B plan? Sure. So I, I will take the what what we know and then I'll kick it to, to Britt for the advantages. You know, if you have Medicare Part A and Part B and the Foreign Service Benefit Plan, you have almost full coverage um, for your medical and your hospital needs. You still have out-of-pocket costs for prescription drugs, but um, you know your your Medicare pays first, and your foreign service and uh, secondary in most of those cases. And there's still in there. You still have access to um, uh, protection for um, providers who are Medicare participating and those who um, can can go a little higher than that, but not the non-participating, I'm sorry, not the opt-out physicians, I should say, under Medicare. And we can come to that later. That gets a little more complicated. But but basically, you've got that coverage. But because Medicare is primary, you're not getting the proactive clinical support that we could offer um, for those who don't have Medicare primary or that are offered under the Medicare Advantage plan. So, Britt, I think that proactive clinical support is one of the, the features of the um the medicare advantage plan for our members that they will get that um that support you know as as members seek to have services done and go through a pre-certification process but what else um what else should our members be thinking about as advantages so absolutely kyle the clinical support is there it is designed for the retiree population um some other things is you have access to silver stars which is a fitness option um you also have access to healthy um home visits where someone can come in your home, kind of do an exam um, type and discuss with you, like if there's any needs or anything that you need in your home. Um, we also have healthy, um, I'm sorry, home delivery, delivery for meals. So if you're inpatient and you come home, we'll deliver meals to your home for up to seven days to make sure you have something to eat when you get home. Um, we also can transport you to and from doctor's appointments if you have trouble getting someone to take you, that's also available. Um, also a wellness program that's designed for retirees. So a lot of other additional value added programs that's geared to the retiree population. And I will just say my, my mom, not, not enrolled in this plan, but a different Medicare Advantage plan, just signed up for silver sneakers and is thrilled. Um, <laughs> as am I to know that she's getting some, some guided physical activity and access that she hasn't had for some time. So um, that, that has been a big selling point for, for our members as well. Now, I, I see, you know, while we're on this, um, that we also had a question about you know, what are the disadvantages? What are we losing? Um, and I think that that some of the changes you'll see here that we've talked about switching from Express Scripts to CVS, you the the customer service is no longer handled by AFSPA. It is handled by a dedicated team um, at at Aetna. But this is all they do. They know the Medicare Advantage plan inside and out. Um, and so that I really think that's an advantage as you make that switch. 
Um, there are some some additional things to think about. Um, and I'll ask, and maybe we have shared it, and my screen's just too small. Um, uh, we have a good comparison chart um, that we can share the, the link to. But I think one of the other things that people, one of our more popular benefits has been massage therapy. Um, and that, of course, is available under the high option plan, the, the traditional FSBP plan, um, without pre-certification, doesn't have to necessarily be medically necessary. You want a massage, you go get a massage. We cover it. But Britt, that's a little different under the Medicare Advantage plan. Is that right? That's correct. Um, due to Centers of Medicare and Medicaid regulations, so CMS regulations, um, we do have to have other steps in place just to make sure the massage is medically necessary um, before we can cover it. So we are governed by CMS, and that does play into effect some of the um, guidelines we have to put in place for people seeking medical care. So that that's one of the big things that, that has sort of come up for folks. Um, uh, but take a look at the benefit comparison chart, and I think we've got some more questions. Yes. Um, so we do have a question from CFOAM58 on YouTube, and they've kind of asked, you know, is this a permanent change if they were to switch over? And um, could they ever go back to just the normal FSBP plan if they don't like the addition? Britt, what, what do you say? Absolutely. If you opt into this plan and you choose that you don't like it for whatever reason, you can opt, in, out, opt out at any time. And you'll be covered and under your um, option plan. Right. And you do still, you also, though, have the option to opt in at any time throughout the year. So if after listening to this this broadcast, you weren't enrolled and you think this might be right for you, you can go through and, and the information on how to do that is also on that um, link that, that we'll share again. Um, you can just go make the, the phone call or go and register online and make that change. And Britt, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think if somebody makes the change today, it would be effective on the first day of the next month? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so it, it we'll get you, we'll get a card to you, but the the changes are effective on the first day of the next month. It's not immediate immediate. Um, so that is um, just something to keep in mind. But you can go, um, you can opt in or opt out at um, any time throughout the year. All right. Um, so lots of great questions coming in, but it looks like we have a live guest in our studio right now. Um, Dorothy has a question for us. Um, Dorothy, if you want to go ahead and uh, ask your question, we'll try to answer it. Uh, can you hear me? We can. We can. Oh, okay, great. Um, my question is the uh, mental health coverage. If you want to see a mental health therapist, but they don't accept Medicare, is there any coverage whatsoever on that? Okay, Dorothy, thank you. And and thank you. You are our first live guest, so thank you very much. Um, so, and, and I want to, I want to, take a moment just to talk about the three different types of providers under Medicare. And then I'll, I'll pivot to Britt to talk about that. And um, Dorothy may need some clarification from you. So there's three different types of providers when it comes to Medicare. There are those who participate in Medicare, which means they accept the Medicare um, charges. So Medicare says a service is worth $50. They only bill $50. There are those who are considered non-participating providers and they can charge up to the Medicare limiting amount, which is typically 15% more than that, that Medicare amount, um, but they still will bill. Um, and we will cover that, whether it's under the FSBP um, high option plan or the Medicare Advantage plan, that additional amount is covered. But the third type of provider, and this is this may be what you're running into, um, are called opt-out or private contract providers. And they're the ones to be careful of because they will ask you to sign something acknowledging that neither they nor you can bill Medicare. Um, and under the high option plan, there is, we can only pay what we would pay. If you have part B and um, you, you're, you're getting services, we can only pay what we would if you went to a, a participating or non-participating provider. So we could usually only pay about 20% of the Medicare amount. Now I will ask Britt to address that um, first, you know, coverage for, for opt-out providers under the Medicare Advantage plan. Does it exist? No. So we do cover mental health and mental um, consultations, but you would have to use a provider that accepts your Medicare Advantage for it to be covered. So you cover zero if they don't if, accept Medicare. If it's an opt-out provider. That's correct. The, the, the provider I already know, she won't take Medicare. And um, the one who I tried reaching through Zoom 
was asking all kinds of extremely personal questions. So I was very, very frustrated, but, you know, and it was only on Zoom or I would have to travel quite a distance to see that that one in person. And the other problem was there wasn't really a list that was, you know, you had to call and talk to some receptionist and we're on hold for 20 minutes or half an hour. It was an extremely frustrating series of steps to go through, even to to find a provider who would accept Medicare in my area. So I would hope that something could happen to make that process doable rather than formidable. Okay. And Dorothy, thank you. And, and thank you for joining us. Um, and I just want to take a moment to talk about um, opt out um, providers. Generally, you know, there, there are, um, uh, there are, reports of people running into opt-out providers and there are certain specialties for instance um uh for instance mental health where um where there are a large number of opt-out because many of them are individual practitioners they don't want to deal with paperwork they don't accept insurance either i've run into this myself with providers in the dc metro area and so that is one um but dorothy we'll get your we've got your name we will get your follow-up information can follow up and see if we can help you locate a provider in your area um so we'll do um we'll, we'll try to be in touch um today or tomorrow just to to follow up on that um do we have other questions yes we are having a lot of questions just about the fact that um you know how does the Medicare Advantage plan work when people live overseas or, you know, how does it impact their benefits if they're just traveling overseas as well? Sure. Britt, can you take that one? Sure. So with it being a CMS um, governor plan, um, there is limited coverage overseas um, since it is a Medicare plan, Medicare Advantage plan. Um, we will cover like if you were to travel for a short period of time and you have an emergency overseas, we will cover that, but there's not coverage for non-emergent services overseas under the Medicare Advantage plan. So if you travel or you, you know, stay overseas maybe for a couple months out of the year, um, the Medicare Advantage may not be the best option for you. You'd want to stay in your um, commercial plan, the high option plan. Yeah. Yeah. And it does require, um, that you be a resident of the United States to opt into the, the Medicare Advantage plan, um, I believe. Is that right, Britt? Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so well, lots of people are asking for, um, we do have a comparison chart link. I believe we have some of our folks on the um, background side that are trying to link that to you guys. Um, so there is, is information posted onto our website that um, on our main page, there's FSBP. The Medicare Advantage plan that kind of breaks it down. It even breaks down the different types um, and parts of Medicare. Um, and we will be sure to, to add that in throughout the show. But um, people are asking, do, do either of you know off the top of your head um, what it costs for uh, a single person? In addition to Medicare Part A, oh, okay. So, so Matt, with your, I'm, I'm seeing some background chat. It may be on your end. So I should onto the screen. So, is it's plan in addition to Medicare A and so what is the cost for a single person? So, Britt, I know that uh, somebody has to be enrolled in Medicare Part A and Part B, um, and they have to be a Foreign yes. Service Benefit Plan member. And correct. So they're paying for the Part B premium. They're paying their portion of the FSBP premium. What else is the cost? So if you already have That's the Part B, <laughs> if you already have the Part B and Foreign Service Benefit Plan and you're paying those premiums, it's no additional cost. This is just an additional option for you. Oh, something that people should note. So the, the cost for a single person is the same as your, your Medicare Part B premium, which is, may be subject to means means testing um and could could vary but depending on your income from two years ago and then the self only premium for um foreign service benefit plan um so that is a great question and maddie i'm not sure um and a great an and even better answer that there is no additional cost and i think that's something to, to be aware of that with the commercial plans the the commercial medicare advantage plans that you probably get the flyers for see the television commercials the radio commercials 
those do cost, but those are for people who don't have something like the Foreign Service Benefit Plan. There is usually a different um, a different cost for that. So yes, great great follow up question. You do pay the full FSBP amount. You're not paying less. A couple things there. One, um, there is no mechanism to charge you less. There's no there's no way that we can charge you less for the FSBP premium. The way the FEHB law is set is that there are there is a premium. That's the same same reason why you're. The premium is the same for active duty employees as well as for annuitants. Um, it just varies based on self, self only, or self, uh, self only, self and family, or self plus one. Where you get the, where you realize the savings is with the Medicare Advantage plan, is in the um, premium credit. And Britt, can you talk a little bit about that premium credit um, each month for people who opt into the the Medicare Advantage plan? Yes, so um, you get a $75 per month up to $900 pre Part B premium reduction. Um, and that will, you will see that um, based on how you pay your Part B premiums um, each month. You'll see that reduction. So that's a nice advantage to the Medicare Advantage plan. Right there in the name. Uh, <laughs> I love it. So, um, Maddie, do we have you back? Um, I can hear you guys. Can you guys hear me? much yes. clearer yes okay perfect um sorry about that guys um living in an apartment with wi-fi can uh, be a little a little techy sometimes um so i'm gonna go back to our questions that we had um from forms so a lot of people have asked um what's really the important difference when it comes to the original plan and the advantage plan um you know do they talk to AFSPA when it comes to issues? Do they talk to Aetna? Where do they? Where does that kind of lie when it comes to Medicare Advantage? Uh, the the advantage. You there's a couple questions here. You are a Foreign Service Benefit Plan member, but all of your customer service, um, all the claims. Even the for, the prescription drugs are now handled by Aetna and CVS um, for the the prescription side of things. So um, that that is the big advantage. There are differences in some of the some of the benefits. Again, some of them are better, like with the prescription copays. Some of them are different in a way that you might not find as appealing. For instance, with the the massage therapy that we talked about earlier. Um, also, in terms of the, um, you know, there is no. Under the Medicare Advantage, as, as Britt noted before, there is no coverage for opt-out providers. With FSBP high option, even if you have Part B, there's a little bit of coverage. Not not a not a ton, and that's that's due to the way the law is set up, but there is at least a little bit of coverage. Um, and so Britt, before I get to the second part of the question, you know, why is it in AFSPA's um, interest to join? Is there anything else you would highlight as sort of the primary differences um, between the, the high option plan? Absolutely. I have two other ones. Um, as you mentioned, it's, you know, the pharmacies are through CVS Caremark. Um, the formulary list is also um, hmm. governed by CMS under the Medicare Advantage. So what may be, you know, a tier three under the high option plan could be a tier four under the um, Medicare Advantage plan. So you just want to make sure you look at your formularies. Um, and another thing is under the high option plan, if you have Medicare A and B primary, you don't have to get prior authorization for services. If Medicare approves it, um, we consider that the prior authorization process. Um, with the Medicare Advantage, there are certain services that do require prior authorization, um, such as skilled nursing care, um, those type, um, some imaging, those types of things where you would, would need to um, get that prior approval before having the services. That That is an, an um, excellent one. Um, and so, um, thank you, Britt, for highlighting those. And I just want to note, we're, we're approaching the end of our scheduled half hour. Um, we will, we will stay on. Um, we've got a lot of questions and I want to make sure we get to those. Um, so we've got to, we'll, we'll plan to stay on at least till 1145 to continue answering questions. And just on the prescription and the formulary difference, um, I saw a specific question. Um, uh, Mr. Baker, we've been in touch. I have some more information um, and I will get in touch with you. There's a, a unique situation happening there and, and we're working on it. Um, and so I, I sent you an email last night. I have more coming as I have more information. Um, so Maddie, back to you. Yes. Um, it looks like we have another live guest. Uh, Gerald, if you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull you up to the screen. 
and you can go ahead and ask your question. I want to know if, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, can we have Ben and another member not? Great question. Um, Britt, if, if you've got two, two people in a family and can one have it uh, or more, can one have it and one not? Absolutely. We let you pick which plan you want to be in. All right. And so if, if let's say that um, Gerald opts into the Medicare Advantage plan, but maybe his spouse who's also covered on the plan does not choose to opt into the Medicare Advantage plan, what does that spouse's coverage look like? the same as it is today it's under the high option and then Jared will be, begin using the Medicare Advantage um, and get those benefits. Fantastic. So no change. And that includes if you have de dependents who are under age 65, not eligible for Medicare or don't even enroll in Part B, they can they can stick with the um, the high option coverage um, even while somebody else within the plan opts for the Medicare Advantage. All right. Thank you so much, Gerald, for your question. Um, we're going to go ahead and answer some more on the YouTube side of things. Um, someone, we've had a couple of people ask, you know, is there a high option for the FSBP Advantage plan? No, there's only one option. So you just have the, um, the FSBP option, but it is exclusively designed for the Foreign Service Benefit Plan members. And, and with benefits similar to the, the high option. And the, the high option is the designation that the FEHB plan gives to the Foreign Service Benefit Plan. Different for, you know, some of the other plans offer a, a high and a standard or a standard and a basic and so forth. We're we, one plan um, and then the Medicare Advantage plan. So very, very similar benefits, except, you know, we've highlighted some of the differences um, that you, you want to be aware of. Good question. Yes, we have another one from Jay, it looks like. Is there a limit under the Medicare Advantage plan for how much can be reimbursed in one year? Um, there isn't under the regular Medicare plan. So there, there, I, I think we're saying, are there any kind of coverage limits and annual uh, maximums? Britt? No, there's not. Good to know. Um, I'm trying to cover some questions that are more uh, general, because we do have a lot of specific questions um, that pertain to specific people. But uh, a big one, I believe, is, so what if you do live overseas? You're not just traveling, but you live overseas. How does that affect, or how does the Advantage plan work that way? So if you're living so overseas, you wouldn't be eligible for um, the Medicare Advantage plan. Good to know. Yeah. So, so Medicare generally, you can check your passport. Um, I believe it's page six. Med Medicare generally does not provide coverage outside the United States. There are specific situations if you're in transit from a hospital in Alaska to like a hospital in Washington state, something like that. Sometimes the ambulance is covered or if you're a certain number of hours from port on a cruise ship, things like that. But it's that's how limited I'm talking about that there may be Medicare coverage. So outside the United States, no Medicare coverage that so does not benefit you to enroll in the Medicare Advantage plan. You would not, not, it is not intended for you. You're, you're not able to, if you're a resident outside the U.S. All right. Um, I apologize if any of these are, um, you know, repeat questions, but you know, if someone's asking it again, then it's good that we answer it twice. <laughs> um, so someone has asked, uh, how are the premiums collected for Medicare Part B under the Aetna Medicare Advantage plan? Will I receive a statement from Medicare or from Aetna? You will not receive a statement from Aetna. Okay, and and I'll just speak generally about Medicare. Um, there's, there's two typical ways that they collect um, the premiums. One is by doing withholding from your Social Security um, each month. Or if you're not collecting Social Security, we had a question from someone who doesn't have Social Security. They retired under the old system. We also have some folks who have retired before they're eligible for Social Security or decided to collect it. In that case, when you enroll in Part B, Medicare will present you with ways to pay your premium, usually on a quarterly basis. It may vary for you. 
Um, but uh, whether that's through a, a direct withdrawal from your bank account or they'll send you my grandmother had a payment booklet that she sent in um, the little coupons each month to pay her premiums. So um, whatever that is, that is how you pay your Part B premiums. The premium amount is decreased by that $75, regardless of how it's collected, once you opt into the, the Medicare Advantage plan. All right. And um, I know we touched on it a little bit earlier, um, but Jay has followed up with another question asking, are there any disadvantages to the Medicare Advantage? Advantage plan. Sure. Um, one of the things that we highlighted earlier is that um, you know, massage therapy. What I and I go back to that because it is one of our most popular benefits. Comes up. We we feature it as well. But massage therapy is not um, as readily available under the Medicare Advantage plan. It, you do have to prove medical necessity. There is a um, a medical review process there. So that is one of the 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 big uh, differences. There is a change, Britt, um, and you may. Uh, if you could highlight the difference between the formularies again, you did a great job before, and I'd love to hear it again. I think that's important. Absolutely. So if you're looking at the Medicare Advantage plan and you take prescriptions, you're going to want to look at the formulary list with ESI and compare it to what um, is covered with Caremark, CVS Caremark under the Medicare Advantage plan. Because if you're taking, say, a tier three medication that's on the e that's how it's tier three on the esi formulary it may be a tier four so your co-payments may differ so you just want to be you know look at that and compare to make sure you know what the costs are going to be if you enroll in the medicare advantage right and and Britt, you talked a little bit about some of the the pre-certification differences or requirements when you have traditional medicare and fsbp or um if you have the medicare advantage do you have any can, can you review that again Absolutely. So with um, if you have Medicare A and B and the Foreign Service Benefit Plan and the original Medicare, um, you don't have to get approval for services. Medicare does that prior approval process and we accept that. So you don't have any additional steps you have to take to get your care. Under the Medicare Advantage Plan, there are certain services um, like skilled nursing care where you have to get prior approval before um, you can have that service done. Excellent. Excellent. So, All and, right. Go ahead, Kyle. Sorry. <laughs> no, I just wanted to mention um, and and so that um, our 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 viewers don't think that we we just kicked Dorothy and Gerald out. We have limited space in our studio, so I thank them for joining us. But we did move them to a, a view viewing space once they were finished, so that we didn't uh, we have space for anybody else who has um, a live question they wish to ask. Yes, um, and it looks like we do have a, another question from YouTube. Um, it looks like Regina has asked, I have Medicare Part A and B, FSBP, PPO. Can I just add Silver Sneaker? I am paying out of pocket for Silver Sneaker right now, I'm assuming. Um, Britt, you want this one or I, I can take it? It's up to you. It doesn't matter. We get this question a lot. so We do. <laughs> Um, and, and, and access to silver sneakers was one of the, the main reasons we wanted to offer the, the Medicare Advantage plan because it, it allows us to offer silver sneakers. Um, we can't. Um, and, and, and Britt, it's all, is there any cost to silver sneakers once you enroll in the Medicare Advantage plan? No, there's no additional cost on the Medicare Advantage plan. Okay. So, and, and let me just say that with silver sneakers, we have looked many times over the years at offering this um, before we offer the Medicare Advantage plan and offering it to members who have the FSBP high option and have Medicare A and B or don't have Medicare A and B. Um, and we have done legal reviews, we've done discussions with OPM and it is not possible. It would be, cons it is not considered within the, um, it is not a eligible expense, um, the same as, as a gym membership would not be considered an eligible medical expense. And for that reason, it would be considered taxable as a benefit. Um, and it would have to be taxable to the entire population covered by FSBP, whether they have they access it or use it or not. And that is that is the considered opinion of our legal advisors who specialize in this area as well as, as OPM. That's why we had to stop doing gift cards back in 2016 for our wellness um, our wellness rewards. So it is not possible. I, I'm sorry to say, uh, uh, but uh, Regina, um, we, we will continue to explore this, but but it is available on, with at no additional cost on the Medicare Advantage plan. 
All right. Um, we have so many good questions. I'm trying to go back and see if I missed any. Um, but it looks like someone has asked. Uh, this is a specific question, but I think this would be great for everyone to kind of know. Um, they, Leon has said, my internist dropped Medicare participation. If I want the FSBP Medicare Advantage plan, how can ASPA help me find a new internist? Britt, that's all you. <laughs> yep. So we have a, um, a phone number you can call. Um, it's 1-866-241-0262. And you can call it Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. And one of our licensed um, Medicare representatives would be happy to help you find new internist. And we also have, um, it, you can also look on um, the website as well. There is a um, option to locate providers. Good to know. All right. Um, I'm going to go back to some of the questions we had that were submitted. Um, let's see. I'm trying to make sure I haven't missed any. Uh, someone has asked, I understand that Express Scripts is no longer their pharmacy and it's now CVS. How is the cost different for them in general? Sure. So the, the I'll start with the premium. You're not paying anything different in premiums um, as we, we covered earlier. Um, so just keep that in mind. There's no cost. But the cost for uh, the, your out-of-pocket cost for prescriptions, you may be happy to know, might be less in some circumstances under the Medicare Advantage plan. Um, Britt, I think, can, can do a better job of highlighting that than I can. Absolutely. So if you have like a, say a generic drug, you can pay as little as $0 for your prescription drugs. Um, but you really want to look at the prescriptions that you're taking today um, and look at what tier they're under, under your ESI, under their formulary list and compare it to the CVS um, Caremark formulary list and see what tier it falls. And then you can look and see what those copays would be. And, and Britt, is that, that CVS formulary, is that available? Um, on yes, the, the yes, it is on the um, there's a retiree page on the fsbphelp.com site where all this information is available. Fantastic, and we have a, a drug pricing tool um, for on the Express Script side at express-scripts.com/fsbp. You can go in there and type in your drug, the dosage, etc., and it'll give you pricing and, and help you know what your out-of-pocket costs will be. And so, I recognize we're talking about tiers, and, and it's ingrained in us um, what this means and everything. But you can find that information um, on the fsbphealth.com/retiree page for the CVS, and on the express-scripts.com/fsbp. Find that out-of-pocket information. You can also contact either FSBP if you have questions about the coverage under the, the high option plan or the Aetna um, uh, Service Center for the Medicare Advantage Plan to ask about that. All right. Um, we have another question from our friend, Gerald. Uh, he has asked, do visits to cardiologists, dermatologists, and other specialists require pre-approval? Um, under the Medicare Advantage Plan, Britt? No, we don't require a referral for you to go see any of these um, provider specialties. Do they require any kind of prior approval, prior authorization process, anything like that? It would depend on, I'm really kind of thinking gearing towards the cardiologist. It's going to de depend on what kind of procedures they're, they may be performing. If it's some type of scan um, or imaging, they may require prior mm. approval. Um, so that would be something that you may want to call the Medicare Advantage plan if your doctor or that cardiologist you know, does some type of scan. But just for an office visit, there's no pre-approval or referral process that we require. And and that, Britt, I, I appreciate you you digging in. That is a really good good point that under FSBP high option, um, we don't require that for office visits either. However, uh, Britt makes an excellent point. If you're thinking about any kind of imaging tests, things like that, especially um, the, the imaging side, check um, and your doctor's office typically does this particularly if they're in network we'll, we'll check with us but um, but those can require um, some sort of prior approval process uh, particularly if we're talking about an MRI or something of that nature so we have gotten a couple more YouTube questions um, so I'm going to try to get through all of those uh, someone has asked how do we coordinate 
the change from Express Scripts to CVS transfer? And this is from Shelly. Yeah, Britt, what, what advice do you have on that? I know we, we've talked about that, and I know that um, the, the team at, at has been, been assisting members with that um, as questions have arisen. Right. So what, what, to, for the transfer, you are going to have to get a new prescription um, and from your provider and um, send that to CVS or the pharmacy that's a participating pharmacy within the CVS network to get that prescription filled. If you have any trouble or have any questions um, about getting that new prescription, um, our uh, member service, Medicare member service team is always available to help um, with that transition. Excellent. Right. Um, and it looks like we have people wanting to know the, this answer to this question. Um, Helen has asked, if I don't change to Medicare Advantage, will I still get my meds from Express Scripts? Yes. If you if you do not opt into the Medicare Advantage plan, um, then you will continue to have the, the FSBP benefits you're used to, including the prescriptions managed by Express Scripts um, and home delivery through the Express Scripts Pharmacy. Uh, and the benefits is stated in the official plan brochure. So basically what you've been used to, it remains with Express Scripts. And it looks like Ra Rhoda has asked a question. Uh, please clarify, I'm currently paying a premium for AFSPA and one for Medicare Part B. With the Medicare Advantage plan, do I, play, do I pay the same two premiums or is there just one premium? You're still paying the two premiums, so you would still be paying your Part B premium, um, and you would also still see the withholding from either, uh, I will assume given that we're talking about Medicare Advantage, uh, from your annuity, um, from uh, for your portion of the the FSBP. So it, it is, it, you, you have to be enrolled in Part B to be eligible for the Medicare Advantage plan. All right. And it looks like we have a possible follow-up question um, about the, you know, approval for imaging. Are approvals re for required imaging surgeries or nursing care approved with the same criteria and speed? Hmm. Yeah, Britt, so we had a question about this, and I think it's, it gets to the difference between our Medicare Advantage plan and maybe some of the commercial Medicare Advantage plans out there. Um, you know, it, are things, what, what is the turnaround time? Are you able to share that once, and I should be clear, once that the Medicare Advantage plan has all the information, because it's critical that we have the information to, to do a proper review of whatever is being requested. Right, so that's a very good point, Kyle. Um, to make sure we have everything where we don't have to go back to the provider and request. Um, I'd have to get back to you on the turnaround time, but we do follow the guidelines um, from CMS, CMS with our approval process. Okay, great. Um, all right. It, all right. Um, so we're kind of approaching 1145. Um, I just wanted to just say that we're going to try to wrap up some things here. And I do want to mention that Kyle uh, hosts our podcast, Ask the Thoughts, um, and he re we recently just put out an episode on the FSBP Medicare Advantage plan in December, I believe. So find us on your favorite streaming service for your Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you use. Um, and he goes into depth about that. And we have so many resources on our website that we will be linking in the notes today. And if you joined us late, um, you can also find us on YouTube, AFSPA Cares, if you're watching us there. Um, this will immediately go up so you can rewatch as much as you want to your heart's desire. Um, so yeah, very excited um, that we had so many people today. If we didn't answer your question, you can send your question specifically to outreach at AFSPA.org. Um, and we'll try to make sure that your question gets answered um yeah am i missing anything kyle you want to add I, I just want to say there's there's we'll be here again um with a broadcast um next month on at the same time 11 a.m on the 23rd of february we'll, we'll have a uh well depending on demand i don't think we'll have brit back we'll have a new topic <laughs> that we're exploring um but if you didn't get enough of brit today um and and could you um uh, ever <laughs> no um she will actually be joining us for our annual meeting on march 3rd um, and there's information coming to your email inbox um, very soon and on our social media platforms about how to register for that. We'll be offering virtual attendance as well as the option to come to our office in person. Uh, masks will be required, we anticipate. Um, 
But um, look for that information. Britt will be there. She'll be talking again about Medicare Advantage. We'll also have some experts, um, colleagues of Britt's, who will be talking about our other clinical programs and um, a speaker on Hinge Health. Um, I'll be there as well, because um, I know you can never get enough of me. Um, so you know, uh, join us again next month. Check out our other videos and check out the podcast, AFSPA Talks. Um, but for now, Britt, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I really oh, appreciate it. Thank you so it. much for having me. This is great information. Great to have your expertise with us and your your vast experience. Thank you for your many years of service supporting our members. And thank you to our members for, for the great questions today. This was a fantastic session. Keep them coming. Um, and Maddie, thank you and everybody behind the scenes for, for making this happen with our first two live um, <laughs> folks joining us on air. So thank, thank you all as well. We'll see you next. Thanks for watching our broadcast. Join us again the last Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Eastern. Also, don't forget to look for AFSPA Cares on all of our social media channels, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn.